It's funny, I'm not, I'm not committed to fighting games on Wednesday. I do not commit myself to the niche fighters on Wednesday. That is on Monday. But I can't help myself because Andrea D just released a, another game, another fighting game under the Der Montage um, label, their new um, game label. If you've been around my streams before, then you've probably seen me play some Schwarzer Blitz. I haven't played Motion Sickness yet, which is another one of their games. So I'm excited to check out Exploding Judo Federation. But it's great, because like, like I was saying, so this is like, it's kind of a what if to if grabs lead to death in fighting games. Motion Sickness, kind of a what if to um, approachable inputs and giving you the spectrum of it can be super simple or it can be ridiculously complex. I love that kind of play on different aspects of fighting games. Actually, before we get started, I'm also excited for a game coming up. It's 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 gonna come out soon, apparently. Trademark, the TM to that soon all over the place. 52 Beat Up. If any of you know the, the card game 52 Pickup, where you just grab a deck of cards and you throw it everywhere at someone and they have to pick it all up, right? Very fun game. I, I have been I've been seeing a little bit about this and then I saw it pop up on my feed in uh, in itch.io. And uh, I did a little bit more reading, so they recently put up their game page. We've got a, a lovely, lovely pixel fighter. I love some of these character designs. You can be a cat. I'm sorry, folks, you can be a cat. Oh, cool, cool, you met them over in the Duels of, uh, Duels of Fortune server. It's a small world, I gotta hang out in the Duels of Fortune server. That's another game that I'm also looking out for. Uh, that, Frostfire Project. There's a handful of games that are like, there's. I see the work being done on them and it being posted on Twitter and, uh, you know, in the discords and such, uh, but I don't have access to the games yet, right? They're either in, like, um, like Patreon-backed um, alpha or uh, not not in any public release at all. I want to get I want to get my hands on some of these. This is what I definitely want to get my hands on. And it, it too, much like uh, what Andrea is doing with some of their games, uh, is kind of a play on some of the aspects of fighting games. So it's a deck-building fighting game which is an idea you've seen explored a little bit in some in some games where you'll be able to do like single player stuff and you get modifiers as you go. Fantasy Strike was actually a game that was initially designed around the idea of the competitive format having a round based um, you get to pick an ability to empower yourself as you as you play through multiple rounds. And the way that game is structured, it's it's best four out of seven as standard. That's that's how you play the game, right? In a 1v1 mode. So, you would have four to seven rounds to be able to like get these progressive upgrades round to round. It's a really interesting concept that never came to fruition for Fantasy Strike, um, but I definitely interesting to see how um, how Robe does, uh, I believe Robe is how you pronounce it, does um, does it with 52 beat up. So yeah, based on the joke card game, 52 pick up, where you throw all your cards into the air and force people to pick them up for you. <laughs> In thematic symbolism, I'm throwing away all forms of the traditional fighting game honesty. This is not an honest, grounded-based footsies game. You can, under the right circumstances, get one shot on round start. Chip damage is pretty heavy, counter hits do 200% damage, and with the right cards, you can make the grappler move full screen in the blink of an eye. This is exciting. Like, I love this. So every round, three cards will appear with certain buffs that each player can pick. The loser of the round, of course, picks first. Varying effects, things like 400% damage for first strikes, uh, level up both of your special moves to a maximum of three times. More speed, specifically movement speed, not changing frame data. This is something that's also interesting with this, that they're like, no, we're not changing frame data. So yeah, here's where we get into the more interesting fighting game design ideas of 52 beat up. Let's strap in. Make building your character a more plausible thing, which you're going to have to do if you're going to be moving from round to round and you have all this, at least there's going to be some RNG, so how do you actually do this? Games are best of five, best of nine, first to five, best of nine, so more rounds than Fantasy Strike, actually. This is also why the game is incredibly fast-paced. Combos are high damage, very free form, but very fast. Chip damage is high. There's blocking health, so think of a risk gear, but once it maxes out, you can't block for the rest of the round. This is another thing that Fantasy Strike does. You notice it if you've played the game at all. It's an extremely fast game. Most characters have very, very fast walk speeds. The pace of decision making is very, very fast. And there's limited health. There's very low health and relatively high damage combos. So you end up in a situation where rounds go lightning fast. It's one of the reasons they made it 4 out of 7. I think they were planning on the upgrade paths being a reason to have the 4 out of 7 as well. But 
I guess it like once again that never came to fruition, but it still it still holds to like something good for the game to lean into basically. Oh, 52 beat up does not have higher lows, just mids. Well, there you go. Look, there's there's no crouching in uh, in Fantasy Strike either. It's just mids and rights and lefts. I I think. I think this is where well, you see like the um, the parallel design philosophies for games, right? And you see how they developers hit on similar ideas. Um, and I think this is part of it, where it's like, look, if you're going to have this kind of faster paced um, game, you know, a high damage output, and it's going to have some of these elements, then yeah, you're gonna you're gonna look at it and say, no, look, we're 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 removing the the crouching because we've tested it. It's for the better. If this game had highs and lows, every single round would look like this from round start. Fast-paced game, wild damage. We got high, low, right, left, instant overheads. So that's what we'd be looking at. Which I love. I love that they have like a test case of, well, look, we, we there are other games out there who do have these these traits that we are going to be implementing in our game right and it's like well we can't have that necessarily it's really i mean there are so many parallels between different games uh in within the fighting game scene and it's, so it's really cool to be able to like kind of like pick some of these things out and um i mean I, i'm i'm fortunate that i know a bit a good bit of uh, history about Fantasy Strike, having been involved in the community pretty heavily and played the game for a long while since its alpha stages. So, it, 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 like, you, you see these things pop out and you're like, oh damn, alright, so I think this is cool. To compensate for the fact that there are uh, no highs and lows, it's just mids, rights, and lefts. Every character has an instant air dash and grabs can be used out of dashes. And so that, that, that's, the, that's the play. You don't have the high low, so you have the right-left throw, which is kind of the core pillar of Fantasy Strike, and they have built um, the Yomi counter system, which is you do nothing, no inputs will tech a throw. Um, and they've kind of built their mix-up system around that, which uh, I personally find really interesting and really engaging. That's why I play the game and I support it. So uh, to see how this is going to be used now, where everyone has the instant air dash, so you're like, okay, lean into that and then being able to grab out of it. That is, um, that's going to be an interesting, an interesting play. So you start with all your resources at round start. Additionally, meter automatically refills. Not unlike Fantasy Strike. Oh my lord, I have picked up on something here. Very interesting. I'd be curious what um, uh, Robbie thinks of Fantasy Strike. Additionally, meter automatically refills and will refill upon dealing a certain amount of damage in a combo. So to balance this, both of your special moves cost one bar of meter. And you can do a lot with meter. And you have a lot of it, but it's up to you to conserve it because you will run out fast if you go willy-nilly. That's really cool. I'm I'm psyched for that. When you when you do plays and like variations on like traditional fighting game systems. So I mean most fighting game systems built around motion inputs. So Fantasy Strike leans into single button inputs. And so they have different systems built in around those moves. So moves like the flash kick from Geiger and Fantasy Strike. There, you can't crouch block Right, so you can't crouch, so you can't do that to maintain your position. But there, there's just a gear. There's a gear meter. If you're holding back or in neutral, that meter will fill. And when it's full, you can use one of your charge moves. So instead of doing the like, press the direction and hold the charge that way, it's just a meter that fills based on your inputs. And so they've they've built that around it. So you're like, okay, I can be in in neutral, and I have the one button. It's one button. It's instant when I have it. Um, but there's all these. Um, considerations you have surrounding it, right? It's like the the, the way the charge is implemented. And so they, 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 they did the same with Jaina from Fantasy Strike, where she has a one of the best fully invincible dragon punches on a single button that you can just boom, do it from any, any position, walking forward, boom, no problem. Walking back, boom, no problem. There's no DP motion, but it also reduces her health by one. So it, it actually costs health. For her to use that and so that's the way they balanced it so you have to find these different interesting ways that you can work around when you're when you're working around traditional fighting game mechanics and systems how else do you accommodate for the differences right you can't just say i said this a while ago you can't just say for accessible inputs if i want to just if i want a more accessible or approachable game and i'm removing motion inputs to do that you can't just remove the motion inputs from games and then say problem solved right like that that change and that decision and the way you're inputting this moves changes how people play this game and will have to change how you design it. Walk Forward Boom is super good. Like the the kind of advantage you get on a Sonic Boom on block or hit is dependent on the fact that you have to hold back for a certain period of time to charge, 
right? So it works differently than a Hadouken, which is the quarter circle, and it works differently from something that would be, you know, a single button or should work differently from something that is a single button input. And so to accommodate for that in Fantasy Strike, they have the gear system. So you're like, yeah, I can walk forward and boom. No, I can't because I can't walk forward and maintain my charge. So what can I do? I can use a move that pushes me forward, but maintains, but doesn't like require me to hold forward. So if I have, say, a back A, that'll do a step kick forward like Guile's little step kick. Well, there you go. Now I have a forward moving move that uh, lets me build a bit of charge, um, change that distance and get in close. So it's a, it's a great accommodation. The whole idea that it's like I just remove my motion inputs from from a game and that is the end of the discussion is so is so silly. Like, yes, that would result in some really bad games, in my opinion. But having it where you're like, OK, I have these considerations implemented because of that change. Well, now you can have a really interesting thing that doesn't rely on motion inputs. You can get the same feel out of it, the same value out of it without um, requiring the motion inputs. And you're able to assign it to a single button press. You have to be clever in these things. You can't just be like, Mar, it's done. So the, all the special moves costing you meter. So there's a big meter management system involved. And then with competitive deck building comes randomness. So there will be a built-in luck system to stop players from just getting the really, really strong cards and steamrolling, which super freaking important. Planning on releasing a build soon. And I hope it is very soon because I definitely want to get my hands on this. So we got four main characters. We got our Shoto Allen, the socially inadept martial artist. Yeah, honest fighting game character, as you'll get in 52 beat up. So you've got the good buttons, a projectile, invincible anti-air option, and a parry. That'll parry grabs and command grabs and projectiles. It's parries all day. Haley, the mechanical powerhouse. Oh, she's the Unga character. Okay. Very similar moves and play styles to other fire-wielding fighting game protagonists. Her kid involves strong pressure, fake outs, and damage so high you'd think this game wasn't even play tested. Beautiful. Oh, we got a rocker, the Thundering C Guitarist Magnus. Huge normals. Never learned what a mix-up was. Relies on chipping the opponent out and keeping control of the round. This is cool. They're getting very distinct archetypes from the, the handful of like characters that are coming out. And then Vanessa, the spontaneous klutz who somehow obtained a yo-yo that's definitely illegal. I have found my main character. We need a zoner in the demo. Vanessa relies on her multiple long normals that can be chained together, along with an aggressive anti-air game packed with two anti-air normals, a DP, a super that exclusively hits airborne opponents. Grounded normals don't push you back too far, just be wary of the full screen command hit that combos if you want to spend the bar on it. Mm. This is looking this is looking mighty good, folks. So it's it's on my radar. Let's like look at this. I wanna be a cat too though. I mean, this is the problem. Vanessa sounds dope, but I want to be a cat. I don't see that cat listed in the <laughs> in the in the V1. Yeah, Vanessa and Haley. Those look really interesting for sure. Magnus too. I want to. I love the like um, the idea of a character who really who really is really built around chip, where they're like, I don't even care if I get the hit. If I get the hit, it's a bonus, right? But my game plan is to make you sit there and block all this stuff and just whittle you away with this like oppression that you have to work through. Um, I, I love that as like an archetype. Man, okay, we got some serious um, training mode options too. Story-driven experience. You'd love to see it. You can pet the cat. Confirmed you can pet the cat. Oh God, I know, I'm sorry, I'm not a top player. Why am I even talking, right? No, I kid. I'm not here to start the discourse, safety man. Yeah, like, uh, like exactly. Like, um, I'm not sure about the Seeger and Sam, and Sam show, but more like Gold Lewis, for sure. Like, that's definitely cool. I mean, like, uh, Morgan in Marvel 3, where it's like, I'm gonna do my thing. I, I give you bullet hell, and... Um, right, like you just got to deal with that, and whether you block it, hey, I'm still in, I'm still winning this. Uh, is like is a really cool thing. It's annoying, don't get me wrong, but I, I I love that that is something that's being explored, especially in a first demo to put that up as something like yeah, I want to highlight this. That's cool. But look at this. I actually I really like the character art too. Um, it kind of reminds me of uh, Battle Craze in a way, actually. Like the the, the actual character portraits, not the uh, not the pixel art. Oh man, and we got like a. Um, uh, Lupin the third looking guy right underneath the cat there. Amazing, Andrea. Really? Murr's fireball in motion sickness deals more damage on block than on hit. Something that could have your developer license revoked. 
<laughs> no, no, I love it. I love it. Because come on, imagine, could you imagine a player having to change their game plan on the fly to be like, wow, I got to get, I got to get hit by these. It's like, oh yeah, maybe you, yeah, someone doing a back turn. So when they get hit by the fireball, they fall towards them, doing less damage than getting chipped and blocking and getting pushed back. I love that. But yeah, no, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to check this one out to see what a, a card game fighting game would look like. Man, five out of nine. We talk about that safety, man, about going to round seven in Fantasy Strike, and it's like, what other game do you ever hear that round count at? And it's like, well, hey, yo, best of best of nines. You want to run some best of nines and 52 beat up? If we're not careful, we're just going to take over um, Stun City Wednesdays as Niche Fighter Wednesdays. Yo, but we have Exploding Judo Federation. All right, let's get into it. You've heard it in the background. This is what's been going on. We got, we got some tunes by Andrea D. 